In this video, I'm going to explain how to use Google AI Studio's share screen feature that lets you share your screen with AI and ask any question that you have. First, you need to open this page and uh, log in with your account. Then you need to go to stream. And then from here, you can share your screen. But before that, you can choose your preferred model. Well, flash models are faster in comparison with the other ones. I just let it be this one, this default one. And then I'm going to prefer uh, Charon's voice. And here you don't need to change any other settings. And uh, I recommend you to turn this on, especially if you're asking questions about a complicated software. So it will also search Google for that. But from here, you can just now share your screen. I'm going to share my entire screen. And then let's see what happens. Hey, can you tell me what is my MacBook model from where in the screen I can see that? You can check your MacBook model by clicking on the Apple menu in the top left corner of the screen and selecting About This Mac. A window should pop up showing you the model name and other information about your computer. Alternatively, you can check the underside of your MacBook for the serial number and then use that to look up the model on Apple's website. Can you see my MacBook model now? Yes, I can see it on your screen. You have a MacBook Pro 13-inch M1 20 model. It also shows that you have 16 gigabytes of memory and are running Mac OS Sequoia 15.5. Can I increase my memory from 16 gigabyte to 32? Unfortunately, you can't upgrade the RAM on your 20 MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. The RAM is integrated into the M1 chip itself, so it's not upgradable after you purchase. If you need more memory, you would need to consider getting a different MacBook model with more RAM. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You're welcome. You have a great day too. Feel free to ask if you have any other questions. Okay, so as you can see, it could provide answers by searching Google. And it's very good and very straightforward, especially when you are working with a complicated software and you don't know how to do a specific thing. So it can just guide you through it very well. I just use it for a simple use case, but you can use it when you're using Photoshop, Adobe products or whatever. Even when you're coding, you can use this. However, it had a weird noise. I don't know why, uh, but I think it's okay. You can still use it. So that's about it. I hope you've liked this video and see you in the next one.